We're making oven fried chicken right now and it is absolutely delicious. Picture this, okay? The coating is craggy and crispy and crunchy. And the meat, the chicken itself, is so juicy, you'll never know that it wasn't fried on the stove top. But before we do anything, any cooking, you wanna preheat your oven to 450 degrees, put the oven rack in the middle position, and get your favorite 12 inch cast iron skillet. Put it in the oven while the oven preheats. That's important because we're gonna be frying in that hot skillet. So, I've got this whole chicken here. You wanna start with a chicken that's about four and a half to five pounds, because once you've broken it down and gotten rid of the other bones, it's gonna be about three pounds total, which is what you're gonna need for the recipe. So I have here a sharp boning knife, a sharp chef's knife, and some sharp kitchen shears. So I like to start by taking the legs off first. So what you wanna do is find the area in between the leg and the breast. And I always like to start right at the bottom of the knife here and in one motion, just drag it out like that. And you're gonna do that a few more times until you get down to the joint. Now you're gonna hear a little snap. So that's the joint, you wanna cut that right off right there. Then you have the thigh and the drumstick. And then repeat that on the other side. So you're just cutting through the skin and then you get into the meat, follow that down Move the chicken if you have to. And again, you want that snap. And the boning knife is great because it gives you some flexibility so that you can get in and around the bones. Put that there. And now I'm gonna discard the wings. And you can let the weight of the chicken help to guide you as you do this. So I'm gonna hold the wing up like this. And if you see the creamier colored skin, that's where the fat is. So that usually is a good sign of where to cut and that way you're not cutting through any bone. The wings, the backbone, you can put that in a bowl like I'm gonna do, and then you can put them in a zipper lock bag and keep them in the freezer, and it's a really great way to make stock. Everyone sort of has their own way of doing this part, but what I like to do is using some shears, you go on the either side of the neck, and then you're gonna trim out the backbone and then repeat that on the other side. If you don't have kitchen shears, you can use a sharp chef's knife right now but the shears are the easiest and safest way to do it. Now we've got the breast and we've got a little bit of extra stuff. So now I'm gonna use my chef's knife, just trim that off. Now, when you're using the chef's knife, let it work for you. You know, you don't wanna be doing too much work. Let the, the weight of the blade do the work. So now I have the bone and breasts, just like so. Now, before I do anything, I always like to have a little Pretend I'm like doing CPR. I don't know, it just what it, this always reminds me of. Break that bone. And then using a sharp chef's knife, like that boning knife, we did the long motions. You don't wanna be sawing back and forth. You're gonna go on either side of this bone in the center. Use the heel of your palm, put the tip of the knife down, and you've got one breast. Now I am going to use the shears and just trim off the rib cage. So I'm gonna do that just right over the bowl because again, all this stuff is gonna be saved and trim off some of the extra skin there. Now I'm gonna cut the breasts in half. So I'm gonna put the tip of the knife in the center on the board, push down. So we've got two more pieces there. Same thing. Now lastly, I wanna separate the thighs from the drumstick there is this line of fat that runs down between the thigh and the drumstick. And that is a really good gauge of where to cut down. All right. And that gives you a nice clean slice. I'm gonna repeat that. There's that line of fat. Perfect. All right. So we've got our bone in chicken thighs, our drumsticks and the chicken breasts. So as you can see, everything is the same size. And that's why I like to break down the chicken myself at home. Sometimes if you get it from behind the meat counter, everything's not gonna be the same size because perhaps they were cut from different size birds. So that's just our way of ensuring everything cooks evenly at the same rate. So I have some salt and pepper right over here. Before I clean up, I'm just going to season the chicken all over with some salt and pepper. I'm gonna do that on both sides. 
All right, so I'm gonna get washed up, clean up, and then we are gonna start to coat our chicken. It's time to coat our chicken. So I've got our egg mixture, the three eggs with some salt, and then I've got flour mixture with the paprika, cayenne, granulated garlic, salt, and pepper. But this isn't ready yet. I'm gonna add some water, and that sounds maybe a little counterintuitive, but do you remember when I said craggy coating? Well, this is what's gonna give us the crunchy, craggy coating. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of water into the flour mixture, and then using my fingers and my hands, I'm gonna go in there and pinch the water and the flour together. And what you want is a little bit of a dough to form, because as I said, this is gonna be those really crunchy bits that you get on top of the chicken. I mean, that is like, that's what it's all about, you know? Perfect. So see what, see what I mean here? You've got like some shagginess there. All right, I've got everything ready to go. And I usually like to have one wet hand and one dry hand. We'll see what happens. And you're just gonna dip the chicken first into the egg mixture that's gonna act as that glue. And then let's go in to our flour mixture here. Make sure it's nice and well coated. I'm not gonna go too crazy with patting it on, but just make sure it's adhered. And then it's always a good idea just to tap it, just to make sure any of the excess moisture gets tapped off. And then I'm gonna just continue with the remaining chicken parts. There's some baking powder in the flour mixture, and that's gonna help with two things. It's gonna to help to promote a little bit of browning on the chicken, and then it's also gonna to help to provide a little bit of lift in that coating. All right, I'm gonna wash up, get everything clean, and then we are going to get cooking. This skillet is ripping hot. It's been hanging out in the oven for a little while while it was preheating to 450 degrees. So I've got a half a cup of vegetable oil that I'm gonna pour into the hot skillet. And note, the handle is super hot, obviously, because it's been in the oven. So I always, always, always put a dish towel on the handle because I'm the first person that's gonna forget that it's hot. Also, I don't want anybody to walk by and get hurt. So the oil essentially is already preheated because of the heat in the skillet. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the chicken skin side down into the skillet. And I grew up actually eating this quite often. My mom would make it. And my mom's a really good cook, but I really want her to make this version because this is a recipe I developed a few years ago for Cook's Country. And you'll never know it wasn't deep fried on the stove top. So can you hear that sizzle? That's from the heat. That's the vegetable oil that's already been heated up that quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna put this skillet into the oven and cook the chicken for 15 minutes. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip the chicken and then put it back into the oven and bake for an additional 15 minutes until the breasts register 160 degrees and the legs and the thighs register 175 degrees. Whoa, look at that browning. That looks so delicious. All right, so again, putting it back in the oven for 15 minutes. While the chicken cooks, I'm going to show you how to make a basil vinaigrette. And it's one of those vinaigrettes that you really could put on anything, and it's one that you wanna keep in your back pocket because it's so good. So I have two cups of whole basil leaves here, and I'm gonna give them a rough chop. And the first step in this vinaigrette is very hands-off. We're gonna make essentially a basil oil. So I'm gonna take half of the basil and add that to a medium saucepan. And then I'm also gonna add a quarter cup of olive oil. I'm gonna cook this for two minutes on medium heat until small bubbles start to appear and until the basil turns bright green. Now I'm just gonna let this steep off heat for five minutes. So we let that basil steep there for the five minutes. And that's important because it's gonna capture that really intense basil flavor. And it's also gonna help keep the basil leaves bright green. So I'm gonna move the chopped basil here to our bowl. 
And then I have a peeled shallot and one clove of garlic that is peeled. And I'm just gonna put that whole into my blender there. And here I have some water. This is a quarter cup of water. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. And if you have white vinegar, you could probably use that. I wouldn't use balsamic. It might just make everything look a little brown or muddy. And then I have some Dijon mustard. I'm gonna do a couple teaspoons of that. And this is also great for helping to emulsify the dressing. And it's also gonna add a little bit of acidity too. And some pepper. And finally, some salt. And now I'm gonna add everything into the blender and blend for 15 seconds until the shallot and the garlic are finely chopped. Okay, so now we're gonna add our steeped basil oil as well as half a cup more oil. I'm just gonna transfer everything into a measuring cup. Oh, it smells so delicious. This is gonna go into the blender and I'm gonna process it for 15 seconds longer. All right, so at this point, it should be pretty smooth and emulsified. Let's take a look at my work here. Oh yeah, that is. That's some fine looking basil vinaigrette there, if I don't say so myself. This little guy didn't get processed, so I'm gonna add him in there. And finally, we have the remaining basil that we chopped earlier. I'm gonna add that in here. And I'm adding it at this stage because it would have gotten pretty black and muddy had I put it in there in the beginning. So it's just gonna ensure it's gonna be nice and green in color and that flavor. I'm gonna get a ton of basil flavor. So 15 more seconds. <laughs> Looking smooth here. Oh man, that looks delish. All right, I'm gonna transfer it into this measuring cup. This vinaigrette can hold in the refrigerator for up to three days, but today I'm gonna add it to a little mixed green salad that we're gonna be having with the oven fried chicken. Now why don't they make fried chicken air fresheners or candles? That is beyond me because this smells so Good. All right, I'm gonna give this a little temp check. We're looking for 175 for the thighs and the drumsticks. Perfect. And let's go in for the breast. 164, that's awesome, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna transfer the chicken. You see here I have some paper towels that are on a wire rack set in this rim baking sheet. Now what I'm gonna do is when I take each piece out, I'm just gonna blot it onto the paper towels, just to help absorb any extra loveliness that might be hanging on to the chicken. Oh my gosh, I am like so ready for this moment. And I always feel weird about tapping myself on the back with a recipe I developed, but like I'm gonna lean into that tap right now. So while the chicken rests, I'm going to dress the salad. I have a few cups of just regular mixed greens and I'm just gonna add about a quarter to a half a cup of the dressing. And this dressing could be used on many things, vegetables, chicken, fish. You could maybe even marinate the chicken in that. Ooh, marinated basil vinaigrette oven fried chicken. Always think of people. So this is all set to go. I'm gonna grab my plates and my silverware. I'm gonna let that chicken rest for about 10 minutes and then it's gonna be time to eat. 10 minutes is up. I'm gonna try a thigh. I'm a thigh girl. And have some of this lovely salad. Mm. I sorta of wanna marry it, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, that is like, not only just super flavorful, but it's crispy. It's got the cragginess, the coating, and it's crunchy. And I didn't have to make a big mess on my stove top. Let me go in for some the basil vinaigrette. Mm. Oh my God. This whole situation right now is just like so excellent. 